and it's and it is accompanied uh, by the performance, one of the performances this year, which is the Avnuta by the Poznań Opera and uh, by Opera Vision uh, as the platform who streams it. So today with me uh, is Renata borkowska juszczyńska General Director of the Polish uh, Poznań Opera uh, for the last over a decade, and Luke O'Shaughnessy, who is the manager of Opera Vision, the platform, free streaming platform for opera sponsored by Creative Europe. Welcome, thank you so much for being here with me. Happy to be here. It's nice to be here, thank you. So I'm going to share a shameful memory to position in a sense to define that othering uh, in many ways and to, uh, to position myself in that discussion. Um, about over two decades ago, as a student in drama school in Conservatoire in Wrocław, uh, I remember going to opera with, you know, with one of the things we could see, we could enter any theater for free as, as a drama school student. Uh, and seeing Tosca, it was outside, was one of the operas outside. And after about 20 to 25 minutes, uh, feeling together with many of my colleagues that this is completely irrelevant to us, uh, and ending up backstage with the ballet dancer uh, playing games for the for the rest of the performance. So with that, you know, in a sense, I'm evoking here a deep stereotype of of opera. Uh, what is in opera that it has to offer to today's world, today's society, and to young artists that I know for both of you are very important. Who would like to start? You can choose. <laughs> oh, I can choose. Uh, look, you are the first one to turn on your microphone. Ah, okay. So I get to go first. Um, look, I can sympathize with that um, alienating experience of, of being in a performance and feeling that they just not not connecting and, and, and not speaking to you and you know I, I've been enjoying opera for a long time but of course it still happens to me uh, and it happens even to hardened opera professionals <laughs> where you feel it, there there is no connection but there there is something happens as you know in the performing arts that um, still motivates the, the, the curiosity to, to, uh, to, to keep trying. Um, there, it, it's not a fashionable notion, but there is something about opera um, that is actually quite otherworldly um, to, to pick up the theme of your interesting uh, title for this discussion. Um, and things that are rather worldly and, stra and strange, you, I suppose, need to work at a little bit to, to get to know them. Um, and I, and uh, I'm speaking very personally, not, 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 not in a capacity as someone who runs a streaming platform, but I certainly find that for, for me, that, that, um, that, either revulsion or that um, you know feeling of disconnection um, actually diminishes with investment <laughs> um, and you know that that's that's um, a difficult and a challenge for people who, who work in opera um, in that um, it can be for me it's a very it's 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 a musical thing if if I get to know the music I get closer and I feel more connected for other people um, it's the story uh, and and there are that's one of the great things about our art form is there are different ways in um, but I can empathize with your feeling of uh, uh, 20 years ago of feeling, why is this, this is not relevant for me. Um, but I think uh, for me, uh, a little work and what happens through the work of education departments, through the work of teachers, for a lucky few, for sometimes in a family setting, it's that uh, investment in in, in in making that step to discover this other world that, for me personally, has been an enormous uh, um, brought in a lot of benefits. 
probably to best to start short with the, with the opening words. Thank Renata. you. Renata. Um, first of all, I would like to express my big thank you for focusing on Yavnuta, this completely unknown uh, title composed by Moniuszko. And um, it's, a, it's a very, very, very important and weak question you, you, uh, you posed uh, during this, uh, this hour meeting. And um, for me, first of all, opera is uh, it's a it's a mixture, wonderful mixture of uh, all types of art. Everything can happen in opera, but this is what I find uh, especially interesting and uh, really very important is to create for the audience the possi possibility of feeling some authentic authentic emotions and uh, um, we are using opera vision platform to promote mainly to promote uh, monushko unknown and sometimes a little bit known compositions or compositions of different polish uh, composers because we would like to make them more popular and uh, concerning monushko it's really uh, I still have the feeling that we have really huge work to do, and but uh, similarly, I have the feeling that it's really worthy to focus on this composer because he has this thing which is uh, um, locating him so close to contemporary way of thinking about social topics, and uh, of course. For some um, people from our audience, uh, will be much more important to focus just on music side. But we are thinking about this composer uh, as a, um, in the in the way which put him on this position to be national composer, and he started to be named national composer in the moment when uh, there was no Poland. <laughs> there was no Poland and he com uh, he used the um, librettos and his heroes to integrate people, to integrate the whole society of uh, Polish community, and it was the reason why in Hunted Manor he was really focusing on women, and uh, in Yavnuta maybe it was also one of the reasons uh, he shown this community of romance, of course, of romance, and uh, concerning uh, Yavnuta, uh, this what is making this uh, composition and this uh, opera and not opera because. Uh, Moniuszko called Javnuta as operetta, liderspiele, uh, not a, a, a true opera, but the topic he put as a um, main topic was connected with the excluded group of um, society and uh, this is excluded group of society, not only in Poland contemporary, but this is the topic for all the world still um, very current. And uh, this what is making Javnuta so special from one side and also this music form, which is unclear. And um, concerning Roma topics, especially especially connected with uh, Polish history, uh, it was impossible to speak about history of uh, Polish Romas uh, without true Roma artists. So we decided to invite uh, musicians from very famous. Um, uh, Roma family and Chureya is one of the most famous uh, music family in between the realms, uh, not only in Poland, 
and it was a good decision because we we really have learned a lot about uh, roms and uh, we really started to cooperate and uh, started to to think about each other so it was very exciting work uh, for all the um, group of people uh, not only only for the stage director costume designer or set designer oh renata froze for a second um this is very true and uh are you back with us uh you froze for a second that's that you're back that was really visible in the performance that the dialogue that that you're speaking about uh on the level of music of course we we hear the music of of from the opera and also the roma music played we see two different orchestra in a sense like i know Musically, perhaps it's a band and orchestra, but we see two different like players of music. We see different performance, and very powerful for me was the moment when when the the singer crosses that boundary, and there is that moment of a beautiful dance, uh, which I think, in many ways, represents a lot of things that you've been speaking about now. Um, Mm -hmm. Without this Roma artist, you couldn't feel that we are creating something authentic. Mm -hmm. Without them, it could be much more focused on some forma, on um, some, I, I think that it's much richer with uh, this uh, true Roma artist. It's, uh, it's going to be, and it's, uh, it's easy to feel it. The, the, and also this is what we found that really interesting, how far is the uh, opera interpretation of Roma's music from the original source. So it's just, uh, if the, the, that's the very readable re example of the um, artistic uh, music imagination. <laughs> and not uh, sometimes so so far from the original and this what is uh, and now we are sure after this uh, three four productions we we uh, did with monushka music that uh, he with his way of thinking about uh, social aspects uh, he's so he he's still so close to the current uh, sensibility. It's exactly this, what we are, the time is passing and we are still dealing with the same topics. And uh, of, of course, maybe because of this that I'm coming from Poland and in our country, as I remember, um, theater, was always important and always connected with some also political and historical facts. So I strongly believe that uh, opera, it's also a, a theater. So it could be also important and touchable and uh, as, as a theater, as a, and it's connected with the um, authentic interaction, authentic feelings in between stage and audience. Because other way, we are getting something artificial. We can uh, find it interesting. Uh, we can uh, analyze it, reflecting on this. But uh, without this strong feeling and emotional connection, it's different. It's not so touchable. And Yavnuta also, uh, because of, of the lack of this strong music uh, frame, as, as a, let's say, true opera, um, it was let's say it was uh, also right to follow Monushko's suggestions and just continue to creating kind of collage, music collage. So we 
we were in right uh, concerning the, the music side to make it richer, to make it different, because it was the, the style he composed it uh, in the this middle of uh, uh, 19. So uh, it's uh, it was the mm, very, very special work because it was so connected with imagination, with the a, a lot of kind of knowledge, with collecting the knowledge, with gathering the knowledge about the history of Poland, history of Rome's, uh, about the stereotypes, uh, current stereotypes, uh, which are so present. And uh, we are, um, uh, we are normally, we are not reflecting too much about the uh, position of uh, Romas uh, nowadays. And, but uh, when we made the ana analysis uh, of the statistic, for example, in our country, which is not so, let's say, bad concerning, concerning behaving uh, to the Roms, uh, about uh, 35% of uh, people expressing the being opposite to this um, to this group of society and uh, now that the part of uh, group of uh, neutral is growing but it's still a topic and it's a very important topic also connected with uh, education with uh, social work and uh, the adaptation of, of people. They are not refugees, they are living in between us, but sometimes they are uh, treat uh, even worse than the refugees concerning the education side. And that, that's the mm, uh, cycle, circle and I'm not sure if it's the circle with some happy end because it's the stereotypes are really very, very strong. Deep and partly because the histories of, of uh, Poland and history of Polish Rome ran, ran alongside each other, which you know you evoke in the show as well, the references to, to Holocaust, uh, mm. references to history are, are very, very powerful and where that you know, how deeply those stereotypes go. But you also mentioned about um, the, the need to, to make a collage. And one of the decisions uh, that, uh, and emotions, and one of the decisions that was very powerful for me on stage and uh, that will later relate to also question I have for Luke, is the choice to, to have Roma language uh, mm -hmm. on stage uh, in, in songs and uh, how that together with the two different types of music, how that created with the very two different emoting that we were getting, two very different emotions, uh, ways of feeling um, and attaching to different emotions that was coming from language and from music, which created extremely rich experience. Uh, do you wanna uh, talk about that? I can, uh, of course, that uh, we can also talk about about this because uh, it's um, mm, tolerance start with uh, understanding has to start with understanding, and concerning languages, uh, it's um, it's very important to accept that people are speaking different language and it's legal. It's not the the Roma language is not. Uh, uh, is as good as uh, as English <laughs> or uh, or Polish. It's uh, much uh, less people talk speaking uh, Romas, but uh, it's a uh, language is connected with culture, and you couldn't present the culture of uh, of the country of the nation without the language. It's uh, it's so. Obvious. This is the, the the beginning because when we are listening to the um, some, somehow popular Roma music, it's uh, it's singing in a different language, 
And uh, language is so, um, it's very important. For many people, opera means Italian. And uh, it's, it's working like this. And uh, it was the, the one of the first decisions that, uh, yes, uh, we will work with Yavnuta, but uh, we will uh, present it in a, um, let's say we will create our own collage. So connected with our way of thinking about tolerance, about being together, about uh, some independency and rights, because uh, uh, we invited them to create this performance together because we were sure that they would like to tell us something about themselves. And uh, this language is um, is very important concerning this uh, this performance, and also the national uh, the national song, because when we are thinking about wrongs, we are um, Im we immediately start to imagine some uh, caravans or some uh, quite loudly behaving people, but uh, it's um, they are all stereo uh, they are all stereotypes. It's a uh, uh, it's not only connected with uh, Polish history, because the, the generally speaking, uh, history of Romans in Germany, in, in Hungary, in uh, Russia, in Slovakia, it's that everywhere history of this uh, nation is complicated. In the um, 18th uh, century, in Germany, you could kill a Roma person without any consequences. And uh, not so uh, long time ago in Slovakia, um, it, there was the official sterilization of uh, Roma women, and it was accepted. So it's not. It was not so long time ago. So uh, it's still current topic. And when we are um, checking some um, some sentences using by, by some politicians from currently from France, from Italy, they are speaking about Roms in a really very bad way. So it's um, it's not like this that uh, we wanted to make a morality. No, it's completely far away from uh, morality because the original version of Yavnuta, uh, which had a premiere in uh, 8060, was could be, I think, in my opinion, and not only in my opinion, could be unacceptable now, currently, because uh, some um, ideas are, un are unacceptable after the Holocaust, Horimos, not only of uh, Jewish nation, but also Roma's nation, because this uh, Poraimos start, started by Himmler in 1942, took uh, 600,000 uh, Romas um, from this world. So it's really the, the, the drama of uh, our common history. And this, um, what we made, it's also about this, about this evalu evaluation that we are not taking this topic so easy now after this uh, second war experiences, because finally it took place not so long time away. Thank you. And I am immediately 
you know, brought to, to images also from the passenger, especially the version by David Poutney, the multilingual one, which spoke about that, that common European history uh, that is different for all of us, but at the same time, it, it, it is a shadow uh, on, on Europe. Um, and I remember him, um, him evoking in an interview with David Poutney, him uh, evoking images of the camps and saying how in many ways these camps were the first picture of the United Europe, right? In terms of languages, nations, and how much it was affecting different countries. Uh, and addressing this topic through opera is really powerful, I think, because opera has that multilingual identity, right? We, uh, it, it, Marta Mateo, who's a, a scholar of opera, talks about that opera doesn't belong to a country. It's, it's multi-European, it's multilingual. Uh, and in that sense, look, what is the role of a platform uh, like Opera Vision, I, or actually the Opera Vision actually, because there is no other platform like that, to amplify the topics that Renata have just raised and to bringing them to, to other contexts, to other nations, because as she said, they are relevant, painfully relevant. Yeah, I'm, I'm really struck by the, the, the generosity at the heart of Renata's process in, in, in opening up, uh, not only wanting to share this repertoire, um, but also opening up her creative process um, to to other communities and and you know and, and reflecting that on the stage it, it's um, um, it, it's a privilege to be able to amplify but this this work is as you say um, look um, for, for for a platform like us, we're looking to shine a light on things that are very locally rooted, but that we feel can resonate beyond the, the, the beyond the walls of the opera house, or perhaps not an opera house, perhaps a, perhaps a, a sports stadium or some other venue, as as Renata often programming programs in different places. For for us, um, the, the 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 language question is interesting. Um, uh, it's um, the, the the whole journey we've been on with Poznan Opera and with the Polish National Opera in Warsaw in in sharing um, uh, these operas by Minushko, which were were not so well known, um, has has been fascinating. And it's so interesting when um, this material is is made available to great creative artists of, of today. You've already mentioned David Pauly. Um Comes to my mind, of course, Graham Vick, um, the, uh, the the wonderful uh, opera director who who um, left us what a year two years ago already. Um, and the idea of making this material available um, either to um, leading contemporary uh, creators from other cultures, be they British born directors, be they Roma artists with roots in, 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 in other parts of Poland, um, that's and that's a really enormously generous process to, for, for for me and and um, it's it's our privilege to to share these things with with Graham's work. Um, we we've had interesting situations with sharing his work online, his work uh, in his country uh, that he's from and in in the company that he founded is only done in English. So last um, the the last opera we streamed, the last but one, um, uh, well, was um, was some Wagner sung in, in English, and of course, you know, the opera lovers of this world um, who have 
Wagner in their veins, feel very passionately about hearing those lovely German plosive syllables and, and hearing it sung like that. And it's a shock for them to then hear it in English. Um, but this is, this is, this is again um, about um, being generous and open with the community, the local community that you're serving. And in the case of Graham in Birmingham, um, he is working with a very diverse population and for, for, for him and the, the company still continues to work only in English. Um, and that's, um, uh, that offers, that's a particular way of making a relevance and connection to that particular audience because they are, you know, getting amateurs to come and sing uh, and be engaged with that. In, so look, uh, opera vision um, in, in its beginnings, um, I think we had rather an old uh, fashioned uh, approach to the, the very nerdy subject of, of subtitles, but it's linked to, lang linked to language, so I'll mention it. We decided that everything should be um, subtitles on our platform in English. No, in the first phase, in 2014, we had six languages, which was very ambitious and rather rather difficult to pull off. But we had English, French, German, Italian, Spanish, and Polish as Europe's most spoken languages. Um, that that became rather unmanageable, and we decided to do English, French, and German only. And after a while, that felt a bit a bit like um, some sort of old European thing to have those three languages. Our present um, philosophy on or approach to 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 how um, when something is sung in a language that people don't understand is to ask our contributing opera houses to give us that sung language as a subtitle, so people can experiment and and actually convert the sounds they hear um, into the 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 you know with with the words underneath in the, the subtitles sung. In English, because it's 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 a universal language, and in the local language. So, for instance, when we're doing a, a an opera from from Poznan in Polish, we would have Polish because it's sung in Polish, uh, and we would have the, the the local language being Polish and English. But in other in other situations, we may have English, French, and Spanish if uh, if it's an Italian opera and done in Spain. Um, but it's true we uh, we are looking to enlarge the operatic map of Europe by our project. We, for the, for those that don't know, we we offer um, uh, pretty much a new stream every week. This Friday we have a live first night of of air from from Hanover. A, a week later it'll be something different. So we are we we're, we're constantly and digitally zooming around Europe, looking at at new opera houses and it's super important for us um uh to, to 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 kind of match that diversity to have hungarian repertoire from 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 hungary um i, I particularly been close to the to the journey that that renata and and um, and her colleagues up in warsaw have, have taken us with the Minushko. but it's there's a there's a there's a similar um uh, a similar-ish journey that our colleagues in the Czech Republic have been doing with Janacek, although Janacek um, perhaps has a higher international profile than Monushko did 10 years ago. Um, and and um, that is 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 uh, is really a great way of celebrating those those languages. Um, and um, to take us back to the Minushko that we, we're talking about, that generosity of those creators in wanting to, to, to um, reflect their local community. And of course, Janicek did it so powerfully in, in the Moravian speech patterns and the way in which the, 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 the Czech language is, is, is sung, sung spoken in his operas. Um, it's, it's wonderful when then that material uh, is used so creatively and so generously by these uh, the, these opera houses, and then Opera Vision comes to 
make sure that everyone around the world can just get a little taste of it via a screen. Thank you. Uh, listening to you and also thinking about Yavnuta in that particular context, I was brought back to what Renata said earlier about opera being extremely multidisciplinary, right? And that is definitely seen in Yavnuta with those spectacular spe scenography. Uh, there is a video on your website explaining how much work it came to create in different effects, effect of the ground, effect of the, of the broken uh, mirrors. And of course, we have band on two sides. So I'm sure sitting in live theater, you have particular experience. You spoke about authentic emotions. So I wonder what are challenges are then to digitalize that? Uh, what decisions have to be made on micro level? So that's to Renata. And then on macro level, to you, look to bring that authentic, well, authentic experience as much as possible to bring that opera to audiences uh, far away who do not see it live. Who do not, we are not in this room, you know, having that sense of materiality of the performance. It's really huge work. Uh, and that's what is helping is to govern the right people um, before the, we are starting the production to, um, to, let's say, to create the plan how to make the registration. Uh, to express all the ideas and uh, to create kinds of uh, empathy <laughs> atmosphere. And uh, it's quite complicated and it's uh, really connected with the right uh, choice of uh, artist also, because for, uh, concerning this uh, technological side, it's also created by, by artists. And, uh, uh, if they are close uh, to the idea, they can make it uh, met better. And so this communication in between uh, stage director, uh, set designer and the uh, streaming recording uh, staff, it's very, very important. And concerning Yavnuta, this is what is, uh, I think, important also, is that uh, we realize this project not, not, no, not in our theaters, because uh, we are in renovation now, and uh, we will finish on time. So <laughs> this I, I can tell you now, because uh, let's say uh, now I can tell it uh, it's, it wasn't an easy decision because uh, it's so often taking place that uh, when the theater is starting to be uh, start renovation it's stopping uh, activity so um, I had to choose what, uh, what will be my way and I couldn't imagine the situation that I will stop the activity because uh, even we uh, really wanted to do this renovation in two years, which is quite short time, and we are close to do it in, uh, in this period. Uh, for the ensemble, two years, it's really long time. So I can lose the uh, ensemble uh, I was working on to build it for last 10 years. And uh, it for me, it was clear that uh, we have to do everything to, to keep going with the activity and we did it. And uh, it was double difficult for us because po Poznan is not a um, city with the huge infrastructure. So the only venue we can work with the whole orchestra, with the whole ensemble to create the staging, it was the, the venue of international fairs. And which is without uh, all this uh, typical theater infrastructure. So uh, we need to collect artists uh, who can uh, use it, uh, who can accept, first of all, that we are, we are working with operas, but we are not working in the Mm, uh, typical with the typical opera infrastructure so that that's uh, it needs different kind of imagination uh, 
Um, but we were lucky enough and uh, Ilaria Lanzino as a stage director and Dorota Karolczak as a set designer, they are wonderful uh, young artists full of knowledge, full of uh, very gifted and uh, very adaptable to the venue with the artistic imagination. So um, the, the Yav Yavnuta was a special, special creation. And uh, sometimes it's also connected with the choice, okay, uh, do you want to accept, to, to invest more of the um, territory of the venue into the production or keep more space for the audience because it's a, that that was our reality how to how to deal with all this uh, all these topics but something has happened um, i think we lost look for a second but let's continue i'm sure mm -hmm. he'll be back but uh, finally we decided to invest uh, in the production in the performance and registrate it uh, as good as, as it was possible to have this registration and to put it uh, on the um, Opera Vision platform uh, for the much wider uh, audience and uh, for much uh, long uh, period. And uh, that, that was the, the decision also. It's, uh, we spoke... Uh a lot about that reaching new audience and from Onyushko to reach new audience. Um, I was also struck by a comment, a reminder that opera is theater, right? And yes. we, we, we think about a lot about that period in which Monushko was creating mm -hmm. and that this is the birth of Polish national theater and Mickiewicz, but we, we, don't for, we don't often remember about the role of Monushko in it that, that you have highlighted and it is really powerful what you're saying about well, sharing that. But I wonder um, from the audience point of view, what new audience are reached through that, both through focusing on this untold stories on Polish stage, like stories of Rome, but also through digitalization that might be otherwise uh, disfranchised from opera, might not be able to go up to opera. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, th this, this is a very nice surprise of this, our activity connected with, uh, of course, mainly with Opera Vision platform, but also in the time of renovation, because, uh, because of very simple fact that we decided to leave the theater and uh, go uh, into the city to look for the audience. So it's different audience which is coming to the, for example, international, uh, Poznan International Fairs, because this is the audience much more, in general speaking, interested in the theater, uh, very curious about the theater, and uh, and maybe much less expected uh, concerning the um, quality of the music sound because not the, the quality of the orchestra, of the singer, singers, uh, of the choir is the best we can offer. It's we are always working uh, this way, but of course, in this kind of venue, the quality of the sound is uh, not so perfect and it's impossible to, to, uh, to get the perfect result concerning this uh, quality of sound. But, uh, I'm sure, and because we, we have counted it, and we catch uh, a lot of new people who, some of them uh, even never attended the opera performances before the, the production we did uh, in this kind of venues, means before our Hunted Man or, or Yavnuta or Paria before. And it's really working. It's really working. There is some um, barrier connected uh, with the opera, typical opera architecture. And uh, it's proved already. So uh, I think that it's nothing new I'm telling now. And uh, it's uh, so we somehow we treat this uh, 
our current situation like a, like a challenge, like a, like a travel into some different uh, world of different audience and like a meeting with uh, much much more intimate meeting with uh, with our audience and it's um, i think that it's helping to um, to 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 be to be close closer to 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 the audience and this what is also i think uh, important concerning catching younger or different audience uh, it's the fact of choosing uh, right artists. Artists are crucial because they are creating the language and uh, expression. They are creating these bridges uh, of communication with the audience. And uh, I think that there is a um, very simple method to, to catch younger ar ar artists, to invite, sorry, to, to catch younger audience just to invite younger and gifted, that, that's crucial, gifted uh, artists. Because uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it could, it, when we imagine the, the way how young people are educating now, uh, it's different than uh, our education, uh, we, the, the education we have taken. And uh, the, the virtual world, it's the, the the world we are i'm much older <laughs> than you but uh, somehow that's our job to imagine how we should communicate uh, with younger artists what kind of language we should to find that's our job to look for this language and possibilities uh, it's no one it's not uh, not not helping just to regret or describing the expectations so that's it's also a part of uh, of this world how to communicate it's about communication so if uh, if uh, you are telling me and it's very nice to hear that yavnuta is interesting uh, for you and you find it touchable it has happened because of the artist creation and uh, they are much younger than uh, a lot of artists we are meeting in the uh, opera area and we are happy that uh, this uh, Ilaria Lanzino and Dorota Karolczak, Ilona Binarz, uh, they joined this opera artistic society because uh, they will make it richer for sure they are doing it now already thank you look uh, we've been talking about because uh, i repeat the question we've we've talked a lot uh, in this panel about how um a project like opera vision but also you have nota allow monushko or other artists reach further and the question was now how is a uh, Opera Vision in, in, in your context helps uh, audiences that would be otherwise dif disfranchised from opera or wouldn't have opportunity to get to, uh, to opera. We are um, realistic about the, uh, the, the, the ability of a platform like ours to it and its reach. Uh, and it's I want to pick up on something Renata said about uh, about it's all about the communication. And for us, uh, it's really important to diversify the ways we we reach uh, out to 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 those audiences. Um, uh, recently, a, a colleague of Kasha's at the University of Amsterdam did some research for us. um and his students, found the whole process of watching an opera online pretty tough really they didn't really connect with it they were probably um having the same sort of experience that you did 20 years ago and really wanted to run off and do something else um probably not <laughs> not having fun backstage with a with with other performers but on smartphones or whatever whoever so um the the engagement 
ask of watching a full opera online is a really is, is a really really big one and uh, opera vision is run by a network of opera houses so uh, um, it's a project led by opera europa who is uh, gathers together over 200 opera houses across europe uh, with a view to helping them network get better at what they do and um, uh, develop their main business which is of course and must remain about uh, connecting audiences um, to this wonderful art form um, mostly in their local communities so um, of course uh, for the opera lovers of the world, um, the the ability to be able to sit in Bogota and discover somebody called Minyushko and have three or four different productions by him beamed to your living room is a wonderful resource. And you know we 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 are um, able uh, to do that uh, and delighted to be able to do it thanks to the European Commission's help. So that is one way. But it's awfully, you know, it's awfully um, difficult uh, if you haven't got that engagement already to really stay connected with a with a show for two, three hours online. Um, it, we try to, to to diversify the means by which we can touch, we can use within the limitations of the digital sphere that we can touch people with opera. Um, one of the ways is to uh, be very demanding of all our contributing opera houses and say, well, look, there's so many ways into this work. Give us a text to, to uh, the written word could be a way in. The, the, the wigs and makeup, the, the design of the set. Um, so all this contextual material, we, we, we push our contributing opera houses very hard to provide and um, unlike kind of rival platforms or unlike the kind of the TV mentality, the web offers that. So we're able to, you know, you're able to watch as you you have done um, the, the, the making of and, and get a direct view. Um, and for us, um, it's really important to, to make sure uh, that we're present on all the channels that, that that people are, we made the choice uh, in 2017 to go onto YouTube, and that's where you know, that that that's where all our content is. Um, and the debate about the power of Google is not for this Zoom, but <laughs> the reach of those algorithms is unquestionable, and and that is has been extremely strong for us in making sure that even Minyushko is is available to everyone with an internet connection on a platform that everybody has in their smartphone and, and, and on their connected TV and on their computer. The other thing we do, um, and it's a recent development, is um, to, to be more present on, on other perhaps less expected channels like TikTok. Uh, where we um, uh, would would edit probably just a minute's worth of some striking and going back to that otherworldliness of opera, the, some sort of hyper theatrical moment in, in a show. And this has been an extremely interesting journey for us um, because it, it does lead other viewers uh, and viewers mostly under 25 to opera. Um, and that's been really, really refreshing um, in that we are able um, through these little teasing extracts to actually tease people's curiosity enough to want to go and uh, discover that. And we see it in our in our uh, statistics, a spike that happens when when we um, use their channels um, to, uh, to to communicate about opera. I think that it's just the last thing to say on this, and it's a way of um, taking us out of the the solitariness of the of the digital experience. Is every time there's a new show and a provision, um, we have a live chat, um, and that's uh, um, something that, of course, you you know all about, and it's a very simple way of engaging with audiences. 
rather nice way for the opera houses to realize that opera vision does have this global reach and that there will be people watching um and saying that they're enjoying it from 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 the four corners of the of the globe and sometimes it's uh the discussion it is nominated by opera lovers who've who've seen a production that they preferred in 1975 but that's okay <laughs> um uh, uh but others you know others there are um really uh it, it it's a means of direct communication um within the limits of of what is a digital sphere but we're we're happy to be reaching out in this way Thank you. And I'm really struck how both of you use the word communication uh, in your answers about uh, reaching the audiences for the opera and how suddenly we are now, we could actually start another panel in which we will be talking about algorithms as another language through which opera can be brought to new audiences. Unfortunately, we can't discuss that, even though I really would like to. And I feel like we should have another panel because our time uh, is running away. This was a fascinating discussion. Such uh, generous answers from both of you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, please make sure you watch Yavnuta. Uh, you can see that uh, at the International Online Theatre Festival until the end of the festival on the 30th of April. Thank you so much, uh, Renata. Thank you so much, Luke. Um, Thank you very much. A pleasure. Yes. And have a good night or have a good day, wherever you are. Thank you for listening to us. Uh, please join us at the International Online Theatre Festival. Goodbye.